when I had mentors growing up in the business or people that I have surrounded myself with, maybe an agent, an attorney, business partners, I don't judge them when I'm choosing them just on results because a lot of results are unpredictable. You can go out and draft a quarterback and he breaks his leg an hour later in a motorcycle accident. It doesn't mean it wasn't a good choice and he wasn't a good pick. You just don't like the results. So when Green Bay drafted Jordan Love, they knew they were not going to get results. They knew he was going to sit for years and years. But their choice made sense to them because Aaron was getting older, prickly, some drama, not always the easiest guy to coach. So you didn't have to like the results until the last seven weeks, but the choice was reasonable. And I was thinking about Jordan Love and the choices. So when Tom Brady left, he was a free agent in New England. There were a lot of choices he could have made, but what did he choose? He chose an offensive line that was seventh in the NFL. They needed a right tackle. They draft one. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Cameron Brait, I think O.J. Howard, offensive coach. So Brady looked at what his current situation didn't have and frustrated him. He wanted an offensive coach, better weapons, guys that could separate. So he made really good choices. Now, we didn't love the results for the first 12 weeks. They were 7-5. and five. It was a really smart thinking. Then there was Matt Stafford. He had a no-trade clause. He could have vetoed anywhere. And he looked at the Rams and went, I'm older, they got a great left tackle, Andrew Whitworth, super smart head coach, star receiver, Cooper Cup, and a good defense. I don't have to win by a shootout every week. And and also, the Rams O-line was third the year before he got there. So if you look at the results, that's all we pay attention to to Brady and Stafford, the results. But even if Stafford and Brady don't win a Super Bowl, their choices were really smart. Older quarterbacks, elite O lines, right? Weapons, offensive coaches. Stafford wanted to stay in the weaker conference. Brady wanted to go to the weaker conference, the NFC. Brady wanted to go to a weaker division. His only rival was old Drew Brees. You could tell Tom was very thoughtful about it. You could tell Stafford, I don't want to go, I don't want to go face Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. I want to, I want to stay in the NFC. All right. And then there's Aaron Rodgers. He had a smart offensive coach. He had a very good offensive line. It was ranked third. He had a star running back, and they just drafted Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson, really, really talented young receivers. And Aaron went, nah, no, I want to go to a defensive coach with a losing record. To the 31st ranked offensive line. Packers were third. I know, I know, it doesn't sound right. Shaky, impulsive O-line. Shaky, impulsive owner. Defensive coach. One-star wide receiver. In a much tougher division. A much tougher conference. Where I'm an old quarterback. And there's like seven new great young ones in their prime. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Stafford, even Russell Wilson, chose, okay, Hackett from Pete Carroll, defensive coach. Hackett's an offensive coach. Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, uh, Bowles, the left tackle, a good starring young running back. Tight end they liked, and some nice defensive players. Now, the result for Russell wasn't good. It was good for Stafford and Brady, but the decisions Russell made were based on a young offensive coach who had Aaron Rodgers, left tackle, running back, couple receivers, all make Jerry Judy better. It just didn't pan out. That's why I always say, be careful about just judging results. Are the choices your financial advisor makes, your attorney makes, your family, your wife, your husband, are the choices good? Results vary. Who the hell knew we were going to have a pandemic? Stock market crashes. Things change. But when I look at Aaron Rodgers, was it delusion or just narcissism and hubris? Because he didn't have a no-trade clause, but he could threaten retirement. So he said with the Jets, yeah, I like that. You think Brady would have chosen the Jets? 
He wanted out of the AFC. You think Stafford would have chosen that offensive line? He wanted Andrew Whitworth and McVay. So when you when you judge these quarterbacks, it's not just that Aaron's results this year were horrible. His choice was. It's the left. You're going to go and face Josh Allen twice a year? <laughs> that, okay. So, I mean, it, it's really fascinating as I watch Jordan Love. I think Aaron wanted this to sting a little bit for Green Bay. You're just a little bit. See your ex struggle. They're in a significantly better position today. Now, he didn't know they were going to go draft two tight ends, one of them Musgrave excellent, or go get Reed, the wide receiver from Michigan State. He didn't know they were going to hit on tight ends and another wide receiver. You can't predict that, but it is remarkable, right? When you look at the choices, Russell made the right choice. It didn't work out. Brady, Stafford, the things that mattered to them, they were the right choices. Aaron made like eight wrong choices. And it's why I said earlier this year, I don't think he'll ever be relevant again. Maybe in the NFC South, which Brady chose, not in the AFC. All right, so I saw Mel Kuyper made this comment. Mel's a draft guy. He said, the Bears, the Bears could get a first-round pick from Atlanta for Justin Fields. You could get the eighth pick overall, said Mel Kuyper. Um, I would not do that. <laughs> I would not do that if I'm Atlanta. Justin Fields was the 11th pick. And based on his uneven spotty career, 82 passer rating, 10 wins, 28 losses. You think he's more valuable? <laughs> um, and whoever gets him has less contract control than the Bears did. Whoever trades for him has to pick up his fifth-year option in May. Meaning, you got to sign him to an extension, and you've never seen him play for your squad. This is crazy. I love Mel, but he's a draft guy. Aaron Rodgers was a four-time MVP and hoisted a Super Bowl trophy. He got traded for a conditional first-round pick and a second. Baker Mayfield, career 500. He won a playoff game over in that circus in Cleveland. He got a conditional fifth-round pick. To this point, Justin Fields' career is like Desmond Ritter. They have the same passer rating. (laughs) In fact, Desmond Ritter's won more games. So if you could get a second-round pick, a second-round pick, forget a first, that's not happening. If you could get a second for Justin Fields, if you're Chicago, you call a team, and Atlanta says, we'll take a second. You literally simultaneously keep them on the phone and call the league office to get approval for the trade. You don't hang up the phone. You get your attorneys right there to write up the contract. Small talk, how the wife and kids. Okay, we'll agree to it. You don't hang up the phone. I do think Justin Fields has a market. But, you know, that last game against Green Bay, when he's on the field with Jordan Love, that gap wasn't a small one. We saw Jordan Love in eight weeks improve dramatically. I got three years. I've seen incremental nudges toward positive things for Justin Fields. And I'm not anti-Justin Fields. And I think he does have value. I think he could garner a second to a third round pick. But you better accept that second round pick because it may be a third. It's like NFTs. Remember when NFTs came out? Like I always understood cryptocurrency. Not for me unregulated money, no thank you, no centralized bank is really willing to put their arms around it, not going to be my investment. But like NFTs, as like 98% are worthless. Like you keep telling me it's something and I don't see something. And the opinions on Justin Fields are wild. You keep telling me what he is and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't see it. He's not very accurate and he's kind of erratic and he doesn't win. He's not very good late. His fourth quarter is his worst quarter. Gets worse every quarter. <laughs> Doesn't play particularly well in cold weather, warm weather, in a dome. Out. I mean, I'm, I'm not anti, but for somebody to suggest that the Falcons should trade the eighth pick for Justin Fields, that, that's NFT territory. That's like, you, you, you got to give me something. Because right now, he's a more athletic Desmond Ritter. Like the numbers, that's what the numbers tell you. Well, Desmond Ritter has a... Does he have a receiver as good as DJ Moore? I don't know. 
Well, he's got a tie down. I don't know. Cole Komet's pretty good. <laughs> well, his coach got fired. I mean, Desmond Ritter, I think Justin Fields is better. I'm not disputing that. But um, it's really interesting to watch uh, people dig their feet in. If you can get a second-round pick on Justin, you take it. You do not hang up the phone. You do not hang it up. And, and in a new environment, Justin, I think Atlanta's interesting. I think it's very interesting. But um, for somebody in the league to say uh, uh, worth the eighth overall pick, he was the 11th. And now you have no contract control over him. The minute you bring him in, by May, you got to sign him. He never played for your team. Just a thought.